good evening everybody good evening first of all a very big sorry for postponing the timing of the class from two to four three then to four finally yes i hope the audio is clear and the screen is absolutely and perfectly clear for everybody give me hearts on the screen and let's move forward with lecture number three plan kingdom territory fights plus super amazing menti quiz at the end of the session yes thank you so much so let's get started with today's topic as territory fights okay so those who are watching the session right now don't forget to hit the like button do share it with your friends and subscribe the amazing platform for more neat updates so this is the menti card after the class i would again show you the page for getting into the menti so stay tuned till the end so that you can participate in the menti quiz so in the last class we have those who have attended the last class or who have watched the lectures you might be clear that we have stopped with certain slides remaining from the topic bryophytes so today i am going to complete that two remaining slides first of all and after that we would be continuing with the topics of pteridophytes okay so bryopsida it is a class of bryophytes which is commonly known as the mosses it is thalloid protonema and a leafy gametophore with multicellular rhizoids are present what are rhizoids rhizoids are the root like structures okay rhizoids are the root like structures which helps them to attach to the substratum the sex organs develop from the superficial cells at the apex of the leafy gametophore guys look this is the leafy gametophore okay this is the leafy gametophyte and in the top or superficial cells you will see the male and the female reproductive parts the sporophyte which is the dependent parasitic plant body it is divided into three parts that is a food setae and capsule the elaters are absent i told you in the last class what is elaters inside the capsule you will find definite or certain cells which on maturation of the capsule that is inside the capsule you will find the spores so on maturation of the capsule you will find that the elaters are specialized tissues or cells they will help in the dehiscence or breaking down of the capsule to release the spores the dehiscence of capsule is regular in shape okay one of the most important feature that is the economic importance of bryophytes the economic importance of bryophyte that is first one bryophytes are used as source of food i hope you all can hear me and is understanding please give me thumbs up on the chat box please give me thumbs up on the chat box yes only one yes thank you so much so source of food mosses provide food for all herbaceous mammals birds and other animals then you will see another organism that is a sphagnum or peat moss sphagnum or peat moss is first of all used as a fuel it is also used in the transshipment what do you mean by transshipment for the transport of living materials that is for the transport of certain substances as a, such as live flowers for transporting flowers from one area to another for transshipment of any materials sphagnum or peat moss is used okay because the sphagnum or peat moss have a water holding capacity or they are hygroscopic okay they are hygroscopic in nature they have a water holding capacity that is why they are used as a source of transshipment material okay along with the lichens they are the first organism to colonize on a bare rock guys just imagine a bare land area 
okay there are no living organism there are no plants no animals nothing is there so as the years pass by okay as the years pass by you will see that this particular bare land area would be converting into a beautiful forest or a beautiful garden okay or whatever where there is an eco it would convert themselves into a beautiful ecosystem there there is an interaction between a living and a non-living environment on the rocks the mosses and the lichen would grow which would break the rock to form the soil you might have studied in your geography and all regarding the soil formation the evolution and all those things okay so since they are attached since they form dense mat on the soil they prevent soil erosion they prevent soil erosion and they also helps in the decomposition of the rocks okay and guys one important topic that is the life cycle of bryophytes this is a very very important topic so listen very carefully okay so guys we have already studied that you will have the presence of leafy stage leafy stage along with root like structures and you will find a sporophyte also okay a sporophyte also so this leafy stage is the gametophyte and the rest of the part is deployed in nature that is a sporophyte so those who are not understanding please do watch the previous lecture in which i have explained what is a sporophyte what is a gametophyte very detailed okay so guys inside this capsule in the last class we have studied inside the capsule you will find spore mother cell last slide of bryophytes we will get into pteridophytes right now so guys this spore spore produced by the spore mother cell the spore mother cell is deployed in nature so this particular spore mother cell will produce different small spores okay they will produce so much of spores through meiosis hope you know what is meiosis what is mitosis and all meiosis means it is a reduction division so 2n will convert into haploid stage the spores will germinate into a leafy stage okay this will develop into a leafy stage having rhizoids okay so this stage of life cycle of bryophytes you will call them as the protonema stage protonema stage and it is haploid in nature okay it is haploid in nature from this protonema stage you will find the gametophyte is the leafy stage right so the gametophyte will detach the gametophyte will detach and finally it grows it separate okay separates and converts into a leafy stage or gametophytic stage which is again haploid in nature that is half number of chromosome and guys listen in this gametophyte you will find development of the reproductive structures okay this is the male reproductive structure which is the antheridium the antheridium will produces the male gamete and this is the female reproductive structure which is the archegonium this archegonium will produce the female gamete both this gamete fuses to form a diploid zygote okay they will form a diploid zygote and finally it converts into a new organism hearts on the screen let's move forward with today's class on bryophytes you can take a screenshot for this i will post a small image of this on our telegram group after the class
yes clear for everybody yes so let's get started with today's class all about pteridophytes you have seen this right just tell me yes or no have you all seen this particular structure this structure is quite common and familiar for everybody near the wells near uh, the moist and shady areas you will find this ferns right in your uh, small ages what you will be doing is like you will be doing is like you will find this you will you will take out this plant and will paste in your hand as statues you will use this as statues actually the spore of the plant is actually forming the shape of the leaf in your hand right yes so pteridophytes are found in cool pteridophytes are found in cool damp and shady places they are found in cool damp and shady places they are the first true land plants they are known as the first true land plants okay they are the first true land plants that were used to colonize the land area they are vascular plants the first vascular cryptogams first vascular cryptogams that is they have both xylem and phloem in their roots leaves stem every part okay they have all the structures root stem and leaves and vascular tissues that is xylem and phloem very important statement xylem and phloem that is a vascular bundles are found in all the parts including roots stems and leaves they show true alternation of generation and sporophyte has true roots true stem and true leaves so guys look in the back side of the leaf you will find what the spore can you see the diagram can you see the diagram very clearly look how beautifully the spores are arranged this spore will be actually germinating to form new organism yes so the very important statement which you have to study is they are the first true land plants they grow in cool damp and shady places they are vascular plants having xylem and phloem and the sporophytes have true roots stem and leaves the leaves now we are going to study about the speciality of the leaves of pteridophytes the leaves of pteridophytes are small the leaves of bryophytes can be small not bryophytes pteridophytes can be small then you will call them as microphylls as in selaginilla in selaginilla you will find microphylls or small leaves or you will find large macrophylls in ferns in plant selaginilla and all you will find very small leaf okay and that is referred to as a microphylls and in ferns you will find large leaves which is referred to as the macrophylls the young leaves of sporophyte show circinate venation what do you mean by venation the arrangement of veins in a leaf yes the arrangement of veins you will study in the chapter morphology what is venation at all the arrangement of veins in a leaf you might have seen in a paper leaf the veins that is on the surface of the paper leaf you will find all the structures all the veins are being distributed unevenly they are in a reticulate network like structure but in banana plan and all you will find in banana leaf you will find that it is having a regular parallelly arranged venation right yes yes so you will study the spores develop inside the sporangia the spores are developed inside the sporangia it can be homosporous or heterosporous what do you mean by homo homo means all spores produced will be of the same type what is heterosporous the spores will be of different structures or spores will be of different types okay the sporangia are produced in group of sporophylls or uh, inside a group of leaves 
and the sex organs that is a male sex organ antheridium and the female sex organ archegonium they are multicellular and jacketed they are multicellular and jacketed and guys they have coiled leaves okay certain species have coiled leaves look coiled leaf can you find the coiling of the leaf okay so the sex organs are multicellular and jacketed that is they are being covered okay the spores can be homosporous or heterosporous can be of the same type or different types tell me yes or no and please interact with me on the chat box just tell me if you have understood the topic clearly or not done everybody yes so guys listen we have studied that pteridophytes is the first tracheophytes what do you mean by tracheophytes any plant possessing the vascular tissues that is the xylem and phloem including ferns conifers flowering plants that is ferns pteridophytes ferns is a pteridophyte conifers the cones and all comes under gymnosperms and flowering plant is simply angiosperms yes next is the homosporous plants which produces the single type of spores which develop into a bisexual gametophyte is called homosporous so those plant which produces a single type of spores which will germinate to form a bisexual gametophyte having both male and female sex organ you will call them as homosporous condition very important homosporous condition you will find in terris edantium okay mostly pteridophytes most of the pteridophytes you will find homosporous whereas heterosporous is the sporophyte produces two different kinds of spores two spores are the microspore and the megaspore the microspore will be the male and the megaspore will be the female clear that develop into a unisexual gametophyte that is either male or female example is selaginilla marsilia salvinia very 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 important one of the frequently repeated area of neat examination is this okay that is homosporous condition is seen in terris and adiantum and heterosporous condition is seen in selaginilla marsilia and salvinia clear very important maybe this questions can come for today's main t quest also very very important favorite hot spot of question preparers yes so guys in case of the homosporous condition in case of the homosporous spore production the sporangium on the sporophyll will give rise to a single type of spores okay single type of spores typically a bisexual gametophyte they will develop into a bisexual gametophyte it can be having eggs as well as these sperms done whereas the heterosporous spore production in the inside the megasporangium inside the megasporangium it leads to the formation of megaspores and inside the microsporangium you will find microspores megaspore will develop into the female gametophyte and finally into the female gamete which is a egg and the microspore will develop into sperms very important guys you have to listen very carefully gametophyte is a part of a plant that produces gametes okay i'll help you listen very carefully gametophyte 
of a plant that produces gamete that produces gametes whereas as the term suggests itself sporophyte is a part of a plant that produces spores very easy right very easy can anyone of you just tell me which was the main plant body in bryophytes yes main plant body in bryophytes main plant body which was independent absolutely very perfect it is the oh my god yes it is the gametophyte which is the main plant body right the leafy stage it is the main plant body now you have to remember the main plant body in pteridophytes is the main plant body in pteridophytes it is the sporophyte very very important don't get confused with this very important for neat exam the main plant body in bryophytes is a gametophyte and the main plant body in pteridophyte is the sporophyte done and guys some of you may be having the doubt what is a for angium Can you all hear me now? Can you all hear me now perfectly? Just tell me. Can you all hear me now? Perfect. Actually, uh, it was a Wi-Fi in between. It's just simply going. That's the reason. Don't worry. We will complete. Yes before it before it goes for the next time before it goes for the next time let's again start
or continue. So done with this everyone. Yes. So these are some of the examples. So this is Salajanilla. You will have a small topic to study which we would discuss. Okay. Small examples. I'll show you the images of that. Okay. Before moving on to that, let's discuss about the reproduction in pteridophytes. The sporangia produces the spores. I told you what is sporangia. Sporangia is a spore produce. It is a spore producing structure present inside the sporophyte. Okay. So the sporangia produces spores by meiosis by spore mother cell. These spores germinate to give inconspicuous small multicellular free living photosynthetic thalloid gametophytes called a prothallus. Look what are the different characters. Look what are the different characters. They give inconspicuous, small, multicellular, free living, mostly photosynthetic, thalloid gametophyte, which is referred to as prothallus. Guys, in this case, even though the in case of pteridophyte, sporophyte is the main plant body, the independent photosynthetic free living stage is the gametophyte which is referred to as the prothallus. Clear? And the gametophyte bear male and female sex organs, which is referred to as antheridia and archegonia, respectively. So let's discuss this image in detail. Let's discuss this image in detail. Done? Give me hearts on the screen, everybody. Yes. So guys, all those which are indicated with this pink color is a diploid condition. All those are passing through the diploid condition. And all those which are indicated with this blue color is the haploid condition. Done. So guys, this is the sporophyte. Inside the sporophyte, you will find the sporangium. Okay, this is the enlarged image of a sporangium. When it gets matures, the sporangium will help in the release of the spores. The spore is haploid. The spore will germinate to form a young gametophyte. Guys, I'll tell you. Okay. Just no need to draw and study all these tables. You just simply write as a table just like sporangium, spore disposal, spore, young gametophyte, like exactly like a table, a circle table, you can just study it. And when a question comes for your exam, just like explain the life cycle of pteridophytes, instead of writing it as a whole paragraph, you can just illustrate it with this table or this flow chart. That's enough and more. So this young gametophyte converts into a mature gametophyte, which is again haploid in nature. Okay, which is again haploid in nature. That consists of a male reproductive organ, antheridium, and the female reproductive organ, archegonium. The male produces sperms and it produces the female. Finally, fertilization takes place, which leads to the formation of a diploid zygote. The zygote will again divide and forms a new sporophyte. Guys, this leafy structure would be there. Okay, gametophyte is there. On the top of the gametophyte, you will find a new sporophyte which converts into a mature sporophyte, which is having spores at the backside of the leaf. And finally, it converts into what? A new plant. Clear? And guys, and guys, uh, I have just uh, taught you just like they would be having a coiling of the leaf, right? They would be having the coiling of the leaf. So that coiling of the leaf, you will call that part, you will call them as the fiddle head. Okay, so that part you will call them as the fiddlehead. Clear everybody? Antheridia produces a male game.
am i audible right now to everyone am i audible am i audible to you guys just tell me yes or no on the chat box yes we have only two more slides to complete after that we'll move on to the main thing okay yes so the zygote is a multicellular well differentiated sporophyte clear so what we have discussed provide the pdf of this session in the still the whisk fern please do write it please do write it silotum which is the whisk fern the another term common name lycopodium is the club moss this is a image of the lycopodium or the club moss In the class, one second. Am I audible right now to everybody? Am I audible right now to everybody? Right now, what is the case? Yes, so let's complete it faster, guys. So guys, this is the club moss or the lycopodium. Okay, this is a club moss or the lycopodium. This is a equisitum or the horse tail. These are the some of the examples of the pteridophytes. Okay, horse tails or equisitum. And last one, fern or adiantum. Fern or adiantum. Fern or adiantum. So the classification of pteridophytes. Pteridophyte can be classified into silopsida. Lycopsida, What about right now? Guys, can you... Yes. Can you hear me?
yes what about the case right now is it audible is it fine just tell me fine and perfect yes so very happy to solve a technical crisis amidst this yes soon we will move on to the main quiz clear i'm very sure that right from the beginning onwards you guys were so happy to participate in the main quiz right hope no network issue happens in between before that let's complete this so guys i'm not just making it as a large screen so you will have the siloptum which is a siloxida selaginella and lycopodia comes under lycopsida equisetum or spinopsida and finally you have the teropsida dryopteris teres and at the antum done done everybody yes yes so i have to tell you something important guys the selaginella is known as the resurrection plant take it along with me common terms which can be mcq questions i am telling you selaginella is the resurrection plant guys why we will be calling it as a resurrection plant is because you might know the meaning of the resurrection what is the meaning of the resurrection means or the resurrection plant is like when the selaginella dries okay when a plant dries what happens it will ultimately die but in case of selaginella when the plant dries up it will combine with the water and again that would grow into a green and a new plant very strange right it will again give rise to the new plant or it will again forms the plant back okay next adiantum is known as the walking fern adiantum is known as the walking fern okay the smallest pteridophyte the term is azola the smallest pteridophyte is the azola it's an it's the name of the pteridophyte okay the smallest pteridophyte is azola these are not there on the ncrt so please do listen walking fern w a l k walking 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 fern okay next salvinia salvinia is a rootless pteridophyte these are out of ncrt extra information previous year aims question rootless pteridophyte among the following is salvinia is the pteridophyte which is rootless done almost everything related with the pteridophyte we have completed okay so the economic importance is pteridophytes are used as medicinal purposes they are used as soil binders and they are grown as ornamentals so guys right now we are we can move right now into the menti we can right now move on to the menti quiz move on to the menti quiz everybody yes you can right now go to www.menti.com and use the special code on the screen that is 8731 7983 present
Yes. Go to www.menti.com and use the code 8731-7983. Fast everybody. Everybody, have you joined? Everybody, have you joined? Yes? Please just tell me, have you everyone of you joined for the mentee? Yes? Yes? What about the others? Everybody right now join, I'll wait. Are you all able to join into the mentee quest? Yes, fast join into the mentee quest. Everybody. Fast join for the, oh my God. Yes. So five questions, only four people for the mentee today. Yes. So can we start starting the quest in five, starting the quest in four, starting in three, starting in two, and your first question right now on your screens. Yes. In pteridophytes, well-differentiated vascular tissues are found in in pteridophytes, well differentiated vascular tissues are found in roots, stem, leaves, all of the above. I have explained this in the class. In pteridophytes, well. Yes, hope everyone can hear me properly. Hope everybody can hear me properly. Yes. Yes. Yes, all of the above is the correct answer. All of the above is the correct answer for the question. Let's move on to question number two. Question number two out of five. Second question on your screens. In pteridophytes, the sporophyte is produced by the in the diagram, we have studied very clearly how a sporophyte is generated. In pteridophyte, 
the sporophyte is produced by the god it is the psi god we have studied function of the both male and female gamete would lead to the formation of zygote that zygote would be developing into a sporophyte not listened properly in the class next question on your screens which of the following are heterosporous pteridophytes which of the following are heterosporous pteridophytes Heterosporous pteridophyte. Choose the most appropriate option. Guys, it is all of the above. That is both A and B. Selaginilla. Salvinia merge shows heterosporous pteridophyte. Question number four, second last question on your screens. Seed habit originated in some. Seed habit originated in some bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperms, and angiosperms. Yes. No doubt for that. It is a pteridophytes. Right? It's a pteridophytes. Last and final question of today's class on the screen. Last and final question on your screens, everybody. Pteridophytes are called giving xylem phloem both xylem and phloem none of these yes perfect very easy simple question yes binaya zola is heterosporous I think I missed to tell that point. Oh my goodness. Menti, menti stopped working. Right now, you will have your final leaderboard on the screen. Here is it. Amitav Biopoint student is the fastest and the topper for today's quiz, followed by Binaya, Notorious Calvin, Pumi, and Sham. So these are the five students who took part in today's Menti quiz. So thank you guys. Bye-bye. See you with gymnosperms in the next class. Bye.